Okay, so in the last session, we started off with organization. Just for the demo purpose, we did not do much, but we understood the concept of reorganization. We'll do that again in the demo today, and we'll build off on the other types of organization today. So that is what we'll focus on. And the other types, I mean, cost center, location hierarchy, location and uh, supervisory organization in the same order as I just specified. So I've logged into the tenant and run the reorganization report. Definitely whenever you create anything in the system, don't use test. You'll find so much with this name as test. This just tells you that you're a lazy work to consultant. So don't use test. So we're gonna create a similar event and uh, there would be instances where you, in the beginning, you might create multiple organizations. Not organization, multiple reorganization event because you are not able to find the previous one. It's a pretty common mistake consultants do in the beginning. Like if you just see here, global and global, these two are same. Workday does not stop you from using the same name again in case of reorganization. So in case you have incorrectly created one, you can mark it as inactive. Any modification happens on that, you go to the reorganization, mark it as inactive. It's not mine, so I won't change it, just letting you know. So I'll start again from the beginning. I'll first create a company. Okay, focus on the demo. When I'm doing uh, the tenant, you are not supposed to be doing the same at the same time because then you will miss what we did. Okay, so we're going to use this, create company, reorg event. So I forgot what the name I used in the last session. Workday wants you to put a transaction of similar events, basically. Any reorg, what's the little meaning of reorganization? That there are managers being uh, shuffled, new people come in, or there are some changes happening within the organization, right? Related to the reporting structure, it could be any sort of change. All that accounts for reorganization. And why reorganization? Because your different types of organizations is what, like, you see this structure here, right? have multiple structures for cost centers uh, for location mm -hmm. supervisory any changes happening in this workday tells you that you need to enter a reorg event if you're shuffling any of these organizations to some place else or you're removing them you're making any changes to them it has to be recorded in one report okay. and that report is nothing but your reorganization event so the one that i created which was power so if I show you that in another tab, it gives me a list of all the companies that I created in the last session. So I can literally download the report, give it to business, that this is what we did in the last uh, activity where you asked us to, you know, make these changes. I know it's like, I don't know what benefit would give to them, but this is our work day is. Mm -hmm. Everything is recorded, everything is organized in one or the other way okay so we already have a company which is power top node company i'll create another one kind of added a child branch to it and open up another subsidiary for it like alphabet is a parent company google is a child company so let's say this is a child company that we have we don't want to give it a code subtype will be a company. These are work to delivered subtypes which you have to populate. We didn't discuss much on the other elements in the last session, so let's discuss that. So every organization type will have a subtype and this subtype are nothing but just for reporting purposes. You can pull a report at the end of the day that these are the items and what are their subtypes. Subtypes only are for your internal purposes. Again, there are no specific usages of this, but it's a mandate. It's a required field by work. So we have to populate. And the thumb rule that we follow is 
the type of organization you are creating, you also use the same subtype. Visibility, we keep it to everyone so that anyone in the tenant can look into it. Ideally, we don't keep it to everyone, specifically for company and cost center, because these are only HR specific visibility areas. But in this tenant, if we select anything other than everyone, uh, we get some issues and uh, that kind of takes a lot of time. So just for the demo purpose, we mark it as everyone. Ideally, we do it only for role assignments. Basically, who has the right security role, they only can see these. And every time you create a company, you have to define what the headquarter currency is. Let's say the headquarter we already have, the parent company, as USD, we can do this for euros. Again, it does not derive anything, but we have to mention these. So you can do, make sure you remove these, or these might add on some errors. Now I have this Power Electric Private Limited. Under we had this one. Now I have this. Now a lot of you will come up with the question: Can we edit it after we have created? Yes, you can. So let's say I want to change the name of this. So I'll go to the related actions. I'll go to company, either company edit or company name and code. Now, please understand all these options that you're looking at is because you are logged in as Logan McKee. So again, as a super user access. As a normal employee in the company might not even have this option. Without any security, there's nothing you can do. So we'll start, I think we are doing any everything as of September 4th. The company, and you see the code is all the organization ID. This is something Workday added itself. So we didn't want to get it. There are many different types of IDs that every entity in the system gets. They are all called as your reference IDs. So now you have Power Technologies Private Limited. You have Power Electric. But right now, this Power Electric does not report to your Power Technologies. Right now, these are two different companies. That is also, okay, you can keep it that way. But if you truly want this to report it, for that, you'll do one extra step. Oh, you see, we don't have the security for it. So we can assign this as a superior to this. We look into that at the supervised organization. Right now, let's just understand that these are two different companies that we have in the system. So that was about company. Now let's create some cost centers. And it's very really slow today. So again, following the thumb rule, add and create as a prefix. Now for some reason, the tenant is not loading the search bar. So if you are not confident that you have written the right thing, just write it down and hit enter. It will give you related options for those keywords. There you go. So we'll start with this. Again, when you have a lot of different cost centers, you can put them together under a hierarchy. That hierarchy would be, let's say, you have, uh, we, we'll do that, okay? So I'll give it the name. We keep the names just by numbers and the department. So I'll put it CC, but you definitely have to start with power. So that's your that's my unique alias so yours should be different power cc engineering one in this case the subtype would change to a cost center visibility again it should only be for role assignees but we'll do it everyone if you select other any other option other than this there's a possibility you might not even see it yourself because of the security it works you can restrict it to companies, the companies that you have created. So I can, which means that only 
I can associate it with these companies that I have created. But I don't want any restriction. Related work tags, we are not working on this. But you might get an error in cases for any of the work tag. This is enabled. So just go through the list yourself if anything is enabled. If it is, what you have to do is just select here whatever next option you get, just select one of them. That will remove the error. But since we don't have that concern, so we can just skip this and assign roles. Again, make sure you keep it black. Click OK. So you have your CC engineering one. OK, I'll copy this because I'll create a couple more like this. This I'll give the name as, OK. Now I'll create another one. And one more, just to get some volume in it. You notice something I'm, even though I'm removing cost center, it still gets automatically populated. I'll tell you the reason why. It's a tenant white setting, we can change it, but we won't, but I'll show you. I've created, now I have four different cost centers, two of them for DevOps, two of them for engineering, but if some leader comes and asks me a report of all the cost centers that I have, will I give him a list of these four? Yes, but will I give it just straight up? These are the four one, these are the four cost centers that we have. Let me know what you want to do with it. The first thing they'll ask is that put it in an organized structure. Put it in a hierarchy. So that is when we create cost center hierarchy. And then we assign these cost centers to that so that we can... They report not technically, but in an organization visualization uh, view, they report to a superior. That is what your cost center hierarchy would be. So let's look into that first and the visual will be able to clear all the dots that anyone has. So I'm creating a cost center hierarchy now. This I'll select cost center hierarchy, not the center. So I have created this, which is of type like this. If I go to the related actions, Sign included organizations. We'll select this. We'll select the ones that we have created. The benefit of doing that, that we now get a structure like this. Only these all four were independent cost centers. No one reporting to anyone. Like there is no person who owns this that we can tell they report to, but in this org structure, you could have created we can also do it this way. I'll create another hierarchy. There are multiple ways you can reorder that. Again, we don't have the security for it. So what I was uh, what I was trying to do is I want these two organizations, or let me remove it from there actually. So now engineering has a separate branch of it which only covers this. And this top, I ideally wanted this also to report to the top, but uh, we don't have that option with the security that we need. Let me try a different way. Yeah, let's just keep it this way. So we have created two hierarchies and each of them have 
two cost centers to it put in a particular order so i think that clears your cost center hierarchy questions someone had that question so just to keep put them in a hierarchical structure in an organized way so now if i need a report i can just pull a report for this and it will give me information for these as well because in a system uh even for a smaller company you have a lot of different cost centers and you cannot just have them independently sitting in the system you need to have a reporting structure so this was about cost center the third thing we do which is very important so we can do that as well we need this task so we have those different companies that we have created and just try to this problem could be a company hierarchy. That's it. So it's all created. And we go to the reorganization. Even when we are doing assigning different companies here, I have to enter the reorg event. I do this. I know I said that electric will report to this, but let's say these two are reporting directly to your power. All right. The next thing we'll do is work with locations. Now, there are two things in location. One is called as location, and the other is called as location hierarchy. Though Workday tells us that location is also a type of organization, but it does not behave that way. Because whenever we want to create a location, it does not ask us for any reorganization event. It's just open the task and you start working with it. So in my understanding, I don't consider location as a type of organization. But yes, location hierarchy definitely is a type of organization. So what we'll do is we'll first create a hierarchical structure for location hierarchy. And then we we'll create locations. The difference is locations are nothing but the physical address of the company. For example, if you're a bank, you have four different offices within the same city. And that will account for four different locations within your system. And how would you put that under the same roof? Like under a reporting structure, under a hierarchical structure, under a structured structure. Basically, you create a location hierarchy. Let's say your bank is in New York and you have one office in Rhode Island, one office in Queens, one office in Manhattan, and one office, you know, just at the Times Square place. So you will have four different physical address. Now, it may not be like an actual office office, but that address is your company address, like where any kind of business runs, whether it can be a warehouse, it can be a storage unit, it can just be a call center, service center, or it could be anything, or it can be your headquarters as well. It does not matter. As long as that's your company work site, or we call it the business site, you have to enter that in the system because you will have employees working there who will report to that location. Right? So let's say you have four of these, so you create four different locations, and in locations, you add in those details of the addresses. And then you put them all under one location hierarchy, which would be New York or East United States, whatever it could be. So we'll create a location hierarchy structure first. Considering everything that we do, we'll create on a global scale that a company uh, has offices all across the world. That power company has offices all across the world. So we'll create at the top level one hierarchy then below, we create four different hierarchies, one for Europe, Asia Pacific, US, I think three, we'll, we'll add one for Canada separately. And that is covered. Some companies have started putting Canada with America, as we call it LATAM, like Latin America and all. And likewise, like Japan is being added as part of Asia Pacific. So we call it JPAC, but not every company follow that. So we'll start by creating the first location hierarchy. It will be a top level location hierarchy. Subtype will be location. And if you notice something that 
once we change the type of organization our subtypes also changes that is because there is a task which give us a list of all of those it's called maintain organization subtypes which gives us a list of let's say these are the organization types right if you look into cost center hierarchy it will give you area if i filter on the company hierarchy it will give you company so you can add your own as well like you would notice that some companies has a different one so you can add what type you want and which type of organization will it apply to so whenever i select company hierarchy i get the option of company and the company hierarchy so if you look at location hierarchy here you see geographic division and location location hierarchy which is what we just saw geographic division and location hierarchy. so just like you won't find it listed anywhere in the presentation just wanted to show you so we thought maybe something you should know now I have EMEA, I have US, and I have the top layer. I can go here, go to the related actions, reorganization, and assign locations. But I want this to first report it here. So I'll go to the top level, reorganization, and make any security changes that might not be a good idea. Okay, so I'll have to go back and see why this option is not enabled. So in reorganization, there should be an option for location hierarchy, which will allow us to change the reporting line of this. That this Power USA should be coming under the Power Location Hierarchy. And that is an assignment that I'll take back myself. But at least we'll go ahead and we, we won't create more location hierarchies until we get that issue resolved. Okay. But let's understand the creation of a location. At least that is what we can learn. Okay. So for location, the task is simple. Create location. And you will see it does not ask for any reorganization. That is why I don't consider it a location, but as uh, I don't consider it as an organization type. But Workday tells us that it is an organization. So I'll give it the name as, let's say, Power Boston. And 90%, more than 90% of the time, we select it as business side. There's a reason for it. So you have details tab, contact information, and business side. We'll have to populate small information in each of these. For details, we only add the location type. It could be, let's say, in headquarters. And select multiple also. It does not make a difference. In the contact information, you definitely need to have a phone number and an address. That's the minimum, else you will get an error. So we'll add in the phone number. We'll change it to And then, it's for business purpose. We cannot change that. This is the reason we select it as business site. Because based on the type we select, this will automatically be added as your work contact, basically for the office location, not for your personal work record, but for your office location, if you have to give it to someone, this will be that number by default. And we have to mark it as primary because one office location can have multiple phone numbers, which you can, by using the add button, you can add it, but the system tells you you have to mark at least one as prime, even if you only have one. Same with the address. Anyone with a Boston pin code? We have that on top of their mind because we might get an error. 
Let's see if we get an error. It was worked as validation in the back end that will validate that there's not a Boston pin call. <clears throat> That's the only information that you have to populate. The next thing is the business site. We have to select some minimum elements. Like what is the time profile for that? Whether it's 40 hour work week, 37 hour work week. So these are some worked and delivered ones. You can create your own as well. So I'll go ahead and use this. And will be Eastern. And all other options are optional. If you want to select them, you can select it. These are optional. Not much here. Let's see if we get an error. So we have an error which says, 956 said is not a valid postal code for Massachusetts. So, so we have this location created, but we don't have a superior assigned to it, basically your location hierarchy. So what we do is we go to the related actions, location and assign location hierarchies. We already have the Power USA created, but this is, see when we are assigning it to a location hierarchy, it is asking us for a reorg event. But when we are creating, it does not ask for it. So slightly tricky, but that's how workday is in this case. So we'll enter the So now if you look at this location, this has a superior, sorry, a location right for Power USA, which is what we created, and Power USA has a member. Power Boston. Now we can have this as Power Boston Remote and Power Boston Office. That is what the trend followed when uh, the pandemic hit. If everyone was working remotely, right, and in that time, all the locations were remote. So you can create multiple locations that report to one hierarchy. So something similar, we'll start building on this structure. Right now, we only have the US and the EMEA hierarchy. We'll create APAC and Japan. Like this, we'll have more hierarchies, and then we'll have locations reporting to it. Okay, so assignment. What you have to do is create your companies, create cost center, create locations. Don't create hierarchies of them yet. I'll have to figure out because the option is missing. So you have to create your company. If you have already done, that's good. Now you have to next thing is create cost center. Create at least a couple different cost centers. You don't have to create a hierarchy around it because we're not going to use the hierarchy. But if you want to practice, I leave that to you. And the third is create locations. You have to create at least three locations for each region. Three in US, three in Europe, three in Asia Pacific, and three for, yeah, I think this would suffice. This is enough. So nine different locations you should have in your tenant by tomorrow. And I'm not uh, concerned about what address you give them as long as you uh, put in the right country and the right pin code. Whatever goes inside, that's uh, not of concern. Because if you don't enter the right pin code, you will get an error.